Well, the church sign says burdens are left at Calvary. Cal Calvary. <laughs> well, the wind's blowing. I don't know if you can hear this, so I'm gonna have to hold the camera in a certain way without the wind affecting it. But evidently, uh, Calgary is the cross, and the burdens are, now that's a mystery, because uh, most of the things that I found that was the things that broke me were the things that made me. So, did I come through the cross? You better believe it, I came through the Bible Belt in Mississippi. I heard all about the cross, and the blood, and the sacrifice, and all of those things. But I'm telling you now that you can trust that there is a solution to your problems. It don't matter if you're religious or not. It all starts and stops with the way you think about everything. So I've always said, and I'll say it again, when you change the way you think, the things around you change. When you really change the way you think, the world around you changes. It don't give you no extra amount of control like a superhero or anything like that, but it does make you start paying attention to where the superhero within you lives and why our hearts are so easy to be broken because it's our thoughts. And that's the thing that has to be laid at the cross. There's a crossroads within us. There's a cross within us. There's a Christ within us. There's a way to actually have atonement within us. I met the end of me several times and each time I cried out for my father, mother God to take these burdens from me, me not knowing that it was just my thoughts that needed to be removed. And there's only, sorry to say, there's only but one person that can do that and that's, that's you and that's me. I didn't ask for a supernatural divine interference with my reality. It just reached the end of my reality and a new one had to bloom with inside my thinking. So I was given some understanding, if you might say the least of it. I was given a knowing, a way to understand without killing me that it was my thoughts that were killing me. That don't happen, they say, to everybody. But it happened to me. I was talking to a lady and she's uh, got master's degrees in psychology and drug addiction understandings and just real nice woman, but she said that I was pretty rare in the world of uh, alcoholism and drug addiction, there's uh, very few that could literally do what I've done. At the end of this month, it'll be 30 years that I haven't had a drink or a dope. Or I have taken aspirin and ibuprofen, but I, I don't even like doing that. But I don't drink, I don't smoke, don't do no dope. And um, it's been that way since I was 28. Now what happened to me at 28 is a whole long story. Maybe one day I'll get off into it, but let me just give you the synopsis of it. I literally OD'd and met the end of me uh, by a man asking me some questions. <laughs> Woke up in a hospital bed and I'm strapped down. I got a man sitting across from me and he's saying, who is the president? Who's the vice president? And I'm just waking up out of this drug-induced type of coma, haze, and I found out later I had been asleep for three days. 
when he was asking me those questions, I was becoming conscious. Boy, that's another whole word when you say conscious. Because I asked him, I said, could you please come back later? I'm still under the influence of all this medication and dope and drugs and drinking. And I looked like total hell. So when he left the room, this big black orderly said, well, Mr. Huggins, he looked like he's trying to put you in Whitfield. <laughs> I said, yeah, he is. Can you help me? And he said, what do you need? And I reached and touched my face, and I realized that I hadn't shaved in months and months. I hadn't even took a, a shower or a bath in quite a while. So I first thing I said, Let's, I want to clean up, and then if I need something to shave and cut my beard off. So when I was actually looking into the mirror, a knowing came over me that I would never drink again. I would never smoke again. I'd never do drugs again. And it happened within just that flash of a moment of instance of making eye contact with myself in the mirror. I wasn't given my identity in the Christ of the I Am with the resurrected power of the I Am. No, I didn't get that. But what I got was an instant knowing that if I decided to quit doing all that doping and smoking and drinking, I could do it. And I did it. <laughs> this end of this month is 30 years. So I laid those burdens down somewhere. It was some kind of cross. It was some kind of Jesus. It was some kind of God that reached out and uh, showed me that I could do it with my mind, my thinking. I'm not saying everybody can just instantly quit drinking. That's what the lady told me, how rare it was. How rare it was to be able to quit smoking. I was smoking three and four packs of cigarettes a day when I was drinking, and I was drinking every day and doping every day. At 28, I was pretty miserable, people. But I didn't get my identity until August the 17th, 2003. At that time, I'm needing a touch from God. <laughs> and there ain't no, there ain't no getting up from this. So, that's when I got my Christ awakening, my conscious awakening. I cried out on what God is and asked for divine help, pleaded, begged, then it happened. I was, my mind became still and I became peace. And I can maintain the peace. I still have a lot of things in my life that show me that I'm not peaceful, <laughs> but that's okay. They don't know the real me. I have to live inside this monkey suit, you see. I know who I am. I know my faults. I know my failures. I know my successes. I know why I was put here to a point to actually be able to look into this camera with a sound mind and a sane way of saying, I did all this to show people that they can do it. it don't make me special, it don't make me a great person or anything like that. I'm trying to be humble. <laughs> if you really want to lay your burdens down, don't pay no attention to what people say about religion of this and the religion of that. When you cry out on you, you're going to ask for help from something that's greater than you no matter what. And don't be surprised if you don't get help. But if you don't, don't give up. Work on yourself. Find out why it is that a peaceful mind comes with being able to control your thoughts. This is all through Scripture and all through the Word of God. It talks about your thoughts. That's the thing that we have to take under control like a bridle of a horse. We have to not let our thoughts control us and dominate us and give us pain and grief. That's the key to laying your burdens down, people. You gotta lay your dirty thoughts down. Sometimes you gotta wash them. Sometimes you gotta stomp on them with your feet. And sometimes you just gotta 
smile at them and <laughs> realize that they're just a dream and a thought of a reality that I was having a life. And I thought I could be something or somebody. And when you got to realize that the only thing that really matters is just being happy. Being happy with the simplistic thinking that, you know, whatever somebody else has ever succeeded, does it mean I got to do it? Hell no. But the world tells you that you got to be successful. I say be successful laying your burdens down at the cross. <laughs> Y'all have a good day.